This is the 2024 Honda Accord Hybrid Sport L. Is it the best hybrid midsize sedan? Hey everybody, it's Tom from Vehicle Visionary. I hope you're having a great day. And today I'm at Holmes Honda to give you an in-depth tour of this particular trim level of the 2024 Accord Hybrid to help you answer that question. If you happen to be in the market for one of these models, this one's in an exterior color of solar silver with a black interior, the window tint that you see right there was added here at the dealership. That is not factory tint, in case you are wondering. Let's take an in-depth look at exactly what you get if you want to buy this model or anything else here at Holmes Honda. Check out the link down in the description of the video. And we start things out here on the front end with the LED daytime running lights. We're going to have the active air curtains right here, obviously on each side of the bumper allowing air to flow through that area, through the front end, improving aerodynamics. That improves gas mileage. Every little bit helps. Now these models do come with front wheel drive only. Shouldn't be news to anybody, I don't believe. But in case you're not in the know about these cars and you're learning for the first time, now you know about that. How about your tire and wheel size? 235 will be your width. You'll find a 40 series sidewall wrapped around the 19 inch alloy wheels and going back to that remote that has remote start all that good stuff on it right here it is a proximity key and it does have the walk away feature you will find a conventional size sunroof i know there's some people that were hoping for a panoramic sunroof when the 11th generation of the accord came out i don't know maybe we'll see that in the future sometime for those who are fans of the panoramic sunroof the, I believe, properly done gloss black shark fin antenna up there, it matches, it works. I don't think that needs to be body color in this particular case. Now, one thing that's interesting here that is unusual for a hybrid vehicle of any sort is that whether you go hybrid or non-hybrid with the Accord, the cargo capacity remains the same at 16.7 cubic feet. Now, you won't find a spare tire here underneath the floor. However, there is a spare tire kit that you can buy and actually add a spare tire. Can't say that I would blame anybody for wanting to do so. It's nice to have that peace of mind and know that you have that extra ability if you get a flat tire to not have to wait too long. You just change it and you're on your way. Here's what everything looks like with your cargo capacity maximized in case you were wondering. And a common question when I mentioned the window tint is what is the percentage? And for those who don't know, the numbers I'm about to give you would represent the percentage of light that is allowed in through the windows with the amount of tint that is on the windows. So we're looking at 40% with these front windows. On these rear windows on the doors, we're looking at 25% and 12% is going to be the back window. And under the hood, we're going to have the combination of the 2.0-liter naturally aspirated four-cylinder and the dual electric motors that Honda says gives this Accord, this 11th generation Accord, a very sporty driving experience. And based on what I've driven over the past few months, I'd say yes, that is true. You're looking at a combined total of 204 horsepower, 247 pounds-feet of torque, and it is mated to an eCVT. How about the MPGs? Let's take a look here on the window sticker. We're looking at 46 city, 41 highway, 44 combined, and 2.3 gallons of gas for every 100 miles driven. And if you're curious to know about gas tank size, which, by the way, this gas door over here on the driver's side is lockable, so when you lock the interior, people can't just walk up and gain access to your gas tank if they wanted to do anything that they shouldn't do. I'll lock the interior just so you can see how that works. That is a 12.8 gallon gas tank. And we'll take a look into the black interior. Let's see how comfortable the armrest is. Put your arm up there. It feels pretty comfortable. I'm not gonna leave my arm up there for a long time, but I think that will do the job for your rear seat passengers. And you do have a bottle holder. We could call it a door bin, I guess, if you wanted to, right here. So a little bit of space and the fold-down armrest with the cup holders built in right here. Comfortable seating, by the way. 
That seemed to be rather plentiful with room back here. I'm five foot 10 and I have quite a bit of space. And obviously that's gonna be dependent on where the front seats are located, but as far as headroom goes, not too bad. And other than the rear seat pocket right here, well, as you can see on the rear of the center console, there's really not much else to tell you about. You do have that sunroof up there that I mentioned earlier. Here's what everything looks like from the inside. And let's talk sticker price before we talk about the front seat area. $35,620 is what you will find on the sticker. Let's see what else you'll find for that price. A little more space here, not only with the armrests, just as comfortable as the rear, you'll find your contrast stitching here, but also a larger door bin, really more of a true door bin in my opinion than what we have in the rear, because those back there are more bottle holders than they are door bins, at least that's my view on it. But one way or another, we can all agree on the fact that you have nice comfortable seating here. They're heated and they are power adjustable. So that's always a good thing. Let's hop inside and take a quick look across the dash area. And you might have wondered, because some models are starting to look the same in the interior to some degree as far as kind of mimicking what we see or, or emulating what we see with the 11th generation of the Civic. Not so here with the Accord. While there are some minor similarities, this area not quite the same, and most certainly on this trim level, not the same with your touch screen, as nine inches is the biggest you can have in the Accord or Civic. Here with the Accord Hybrid, 12.3 inches. And we'll get to that in depth a little more in just a bit when we hop over to the driver's side. You'll also find our first look at USB options here. Two in the front, and there's no wireless charging pad here, but that's okay. Higher trim levels will offer that. Your conventional style shifter, your drive mode selector, you know what all is there, I believe, beyond that. But as far as the lack of USB connectivity in the rear seating area, there is an option. It's within the center console right here. You can see it right there, a 12 volt power outlet. So what that ultimately means is you could actually run an adapter back to your rear seat passengers from the center console. Yes, the lid will close without a problem. With that in there, the cable will not prevent that from closing. So a nice option to have as a just-in-case sort of option. And here with the upper console, we will find a few different controls and switches. Right here, something I didn't mention earlier, and that is that you can tilt and slide open the sunroof if so desired. And here with the driver's side door, obviously a few additional buttons and switches. Some controls covered up here by the Tom, you better not roll down those freshly tinted windows sticker, so I better abide by that and leave it on there. But obviously you can control all four windows right here. You control your side view mirrors right here. And you do have seat memory settings, a couple of different settings. That's good to know. You can open the trunk by simply pushing that button from the driver's seat. Makes things nice and simple. And if you drop the lever right here, you can adjust the tilt and telescopically adjustable steering wheel. Do make sure you put that back in place before you take off down the road, or that could make for a very interesting and maybe not so pleasant driving experience. I don't know, but let's see what comes up on the dashboard here. As far as your sounds and sights go, you can see what all is here. Didn't really put the steering wheel in the best position for that, but <laughs> there you go. I gave you the best view I could. And speaking of the instrument cluster and its view, a very nice modern look as of the 2023 model year carrying over here into 2024. And by the way, no major changes for 2024 in case you were wondering. And here's something interesting you may not have seen before. When you turn the headlights on, you can see the illumination in front of the car. And when you put your foot on the brake, the brakes light light up and the car goes down into ready position when you put it into drive. Something interesting there. So you can see what all we have where that is concerned. Here are your controls. These are not paddle shifters. These are actually regenerative braking control shifters. I guess that's what we could call those, but that's how you adjust how the regenerative braking works, which is using kinetic energy to keep the battery charged in the vehicle. So a nice feature to have where that's concerned and you can actually change how that works increase or decrease if you want to. Control your windshield wipers here and just a quick look at the steering wheel. And as I mentioned earlier in the video, we're gonna take a closer look here at the 12.3 inch 
touchscreen, the largest in the Accord as of right now that you can have. Very easy to deal with. You have wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto compatibility, so that's a good thing to know. A very nice look with the menu here for vehicle settings, and there's quite a bit going on here, but don't let that intimidate you and say there's too much. It's easy to figure out. Just use the hunt and peck method, as I like to call it. You can go in here and look at some of your different settings and make changes, turn things on and off if something isn't working like it should be. Well, you know what to do to fix that. You can go in there and turn it back on. That's most likely going to be what the challenge is. And how about the driver assist system setup? Well, I told you what your safety features are earlier. Traffic sign recognition is here, something I didn't mention earlier, but you can see all of that, the display and everything that we have. And we'll go back to the main screen right here, show you that if you want to see what's going on with your power flow, here's your power flow meter. You can also have that on the driver's display, the instrument cluster right here, if you so desire. And what about a rear view camera? Well, you do have the multi-view rear view camera here. Nice and clear, you've got your trajectory lines there. Very bright, very easy to deal with. And I did already pair my smartphone, my iPhone, like I said, wireless, no problem. Now you see that flickering effect right there? You might say to yourself or to me, hey Tom, what is up with that? Something's wrong with that screen. Actually, that just has to do with my camera, the GoPro that I'm filming with. You probably see that in a lot of videos here on YouTube. So let's go through our driving modes and we actually start with normal. We'll go down to econ mode and then we'll go back up here to sport mode you also have individual mode if you want to use that where you can configure every single aspect of what's going on with the vehicle. But the thing is, everything doesn't have to be the same. For example, if you want the powertrain to be sport, but the steering to be normal, well, you can leave it that way. It just depends on what you want to do and how you want to set things up. So kind of a neat look there as far as that goes. Nice little options to have quite a bit going on with the car. And you also have an eight speaker audio system here. Let's give you a sampling of how that sounds. Okay, we won't go too long with that, but hopefully that's enough. I know a lot of you like to know about that, so there you go. All right, let's get out on the road for our quick test drive here with the Accord Hybrid. One thing about it, and I know a lot of people don't like the fact that the 2.0T was gone as of the 2023 model year. This is the closest you're going to get, but it is surprisingly fun to drive. It definitely gets down the road well. We'll get up to speed no problem, and you can still drive at a pretty high speed, depending on where you are, if you're in a lot of traffic and a large city out on the interstate, whatever the case is, I know that you can still maintain some very solid gas mileage numbers. So depending on your situation and where you drive and what kind of driving you do, well, you're likely going to be just fine no matter what. But the good thing is, is that you can drop the pedal when you need to and get up to speed, get around slower moving traffic, merge into traffic at a little above the speed limit, maybe a little more than that, depending on how fast traffic is moving, hint, hint, to some of you Shreveport Bossier drivers and drivers everywhere, because that is how you're supposed to do it. But one way or another, you have a very enjoyable driving experience. I do think that it does have that sporty feel to it. It's not going to be a high performance sports car or anything like that, but you're still going to be able to get down the road with absolutely no problem and have a good time doing so. And it's a very nice and practical daily driver. That really makes a big difference for every situation you might face. Plenty of room here in the interior, plenty of cargo space and the ride quality is comfortable. The seats themselves are comfortable. Everything is easy to get to. The steering wheel is nice and comfortable. Just an overall, what I would call a very well-balanced vehicle. But I am curious to know, even though we are a long way away from it happening, but 
when the next generation of the Accord comes out, what would you like to see changed or added? It should be interesting to see what kind of comments you leave based on that question. Okay, tell me what you think about the 2024 Honda Accord Hybrid Sport L. Is it the best hybrid midsize sedan? Tell me what your thoughts are. And if you plan to buy one of these models, whether it's a Sport L or any other trim level of the Accord, hybrid or non-hybrid, tell me how you plan to spec it out. What trim level, what exterior color? I'm curious to know. I do want to say a special thanks to my friends here at Holmes Honda for loaning me this Accord for the day. And a special thanks to each and every one of you for being kind enough to give me the opportunity to give you a vision for your next vehicle. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to hit the like button because that does help me out quite a bit. If you haven't subscribed to the Vehicle Visionary YouTube channel just yet, please consider doing so. And if you would like to learn about additional vehicles you may wish to consider purchasing, check out the video that's on the screen right now and I will see you there.